I'm back. I'm Mary. And we're from the Wiltshire Centre for Independent Living. We're going to be taking you through um, some of the disability awareness sessions today. Um, and we have partnered up with Inverbus and Go Ahead to bring you these series of disability training videos around using transport. In making this video, we spoke to 200 disabled people throughout Wiltshire about their experiences on bus travel. By doing these videos, we just want to tell people about our experiences, good and bad. We've got a load of different people joining with the video and sharing their experiences too. And what we're going to say is by no means exhaustive, but we hope they give you a better idea of what it is like for disabled passengers travelling on your buses and a better idea of the part that you have to play in making bus travel inclusive and accessible for all. First up, we are going to be talking about the value that bus travel has on for disabled people. Why should you listen to what we have to say? Why, why does disability awareness training matter? So one in five people in the UK have a disability and for you working in transport the proportion of disabled people on your bus is likely to be much higher. For many disabled people bus travel is our main mode of transport, it's the lifeline into our communities. In 2021 31% of passengers travelling by bus in the UK either had a dis disabled or a concessionary pass. Um, I, I use the bus on a daily basis really, um, I, I go to the hospital, my main hospital, to do swimming and so I catch the bus back, so it's usually about five or six times a week. We use the bus mainly for social uh, reasons, for taking uh, Gary out in the wheelchair to somewhere different, perhaps for lunch or if we need to go shopping in Bath, say, it's nice to make the day of it with the bus as a part of the day trip, um, part of the day's pleasure as well as a necessity. In our research, 60% of people said travelling by, by bus was their preferred mode of tra transport for distance is over five miles. Representing such a large proportion of customers, it's important that you know how to support disabled customers in the best way that you can. As you can imagine, public transport hasn't always been accessible to disabled people. In, in the 1990s, Disability Action Network launched posts of protest we saw them chain themselves to buses in the fight for better accessibility. So, for me, for example, I used to have to travel in the guard van when I was using the trains. I know we're talking about buses, but I just wanted to give you a personal experience. But after the protest, it's a lot easier for us to access transport, but like we said at the beginning, there are still issues. So all the protests in the 90s led to the 1995 Disability Discrimination Act, uh, which has now been superseded by the 2010 Equalities Act. The 2010 Equalities Act means that bus companies must not discriminate against disabled people. This means that disabled customers should receive a fair and equivalent service to what their non-disabled customers receive. Which is where you guys come in. The number one response given in our research was that bus drivers' attitudes and actions what makes the journey accessible? You have the power to improve accessibility and inclusion for the disabled customers who will use your bus. This training really matters because your role is crucial. <laughs> 